Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming out this morning. I'm Rick Bentley, the Sports Information Director here, and I was charged with leading us off in a word of prayer. And I was told a long time ago by a guy named Gene Davis, never say no to the opportunity to stay up, stand up for your Lord. But at this moment, I am going to defer to somebody else on this stage. We've got a preacher up here. Who better to say the prayer? One of our Hall of Fame inductees, will you please welcome Vernon White to lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Father God of heaven, we thank you today for your abundant blessings in our life. Lord, it's in you we live and move and have our very being. Every talent, every gift that we have is given by you. Today, Father, we're thankful for every person that's here and we speak blessing over their lives. God be with us in a special way today and we'll always give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Vernon. Please welcome the president of the University of Pikeville, Governor Paul Patton. Thank you, Rick, and welcome. Welcome to the campus of the University of Pikeville and <clears throat> to our Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremonies. We believe that athletics at the University of Pikeville can be a very, very important developmental tool for young people trying to move out into the world and, and become a mature, responsible individual, uh, and an, an individual that is committed to doing their best. And that's what I like so much about our athletics program, the way we run it, is that uh, it does teach people to adopt that habit of, uh, of doing their best. And, and as I talk to the various athletes that the coaches try to recruit, I always try to make that point, that uh, if you learn to do your very best in whatever you do, you'll be successful. And the thing about athletics is it's really easy to see that you're doing that. You know, if you don't do your best, you're probably not going to get to play much. Your team probably is not going to win very much. But if you, if you do your best, now sometimes great things can happen. Just like our young men that won the national championship last year. They won because every night for five nights, every minute of that entire game, they were doing their best. And they came, overcame great obstacles uh, and, and were successful. And, and, and that's what life is. That's, that's what life is. And that's what these young people are going to fa f face as they, uh, as they go through life. So we're very proud of the place that athletics plays in developing young people here at the University of Pikeville. And, uh, and I think it's very appropriate that we pause and recognize those people that have done a particularly outstanding job. And uh, that's what we're going to do here just in a few minutes. I do want to to announce that uh, we've reached an agreement with the Expo Center to uh, uh, move the Hall of Fame into a very, very prominent place uh, in the Expo Center. Now we're looking for the money to do it and we, we're gonna try to get that uh, next year. But uh, I think that it shows our uh, understanding of what these young people have contributed to uh, the, the pro progress of this institution and what they're gonna continue to contribute to uh, to our, our, our society. And uh, each of these people have done an outstanding job after leaving the University of Pikeville, and it's very appropriate that we uh, recognize them this morning. So to each of them individually, I welcome you and congratulate you, and to all of you, uh, enjoy this very, very important ceremony. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Reggie Overton. And I've been here six months, and I'm very impressed with the University of Pikeville. And it's an honor to be here standing in front of these young men and women. And I get in trouble if I say Pikeville College, not this time. I get fined every time I say Pikeville College, but I think today we'll make an exception for you guys to say Pikeville College. I know what it means to you, and thanks for coming back and the teams. And, I, you know, it's always a delight to see people that have given their all for an institution. And I see Robert Staggs and some of the coaches, and you see the tears flowing, and they hadn't seen people in years. And it really, it's touching. And it's always good to honor those, those individuals. As Governor Patton said, uh, we're, we're looking forward to having a, a brand new uh, Hall of Fame room in the Expo Center. And, and hopefully we, that can come to fruition if I get out and, and, and shake the trees and get some money. So that'll be my job. So uh, it'll, I'll make a promise to you we're going to make that happen, and it'll, and it'll uh, do everybody proud. 
So uh, I promised uh, Rick Bentley I'm not going to get up here. It's not all about me. It's, uh, it's about honoring these uh, individuals. So uh, thanks for coming and uh, enjoy yourself today. And we've got two ball games and hope you'll come out to the Expo Center and uh, support our, our student athletes. Thank you. Thank everyone for being here. Uh, this is a special day in uh, University of Pikeville Athletics. Uh, Hall of Fame Day uh, brings back a lot of good memories, uh, a lot of good memories of, of these individuals that are going in today. Uh, do we have uh, any Hall of Fame members out in the crowd right now? If you, if you are, would you please stand up? <clears throat> Thank you all for coming back. Uh, what we'll do today is, is uh, I will, I'm going to introduce uh, Gary Justice, who's going to uh, introduce our first, our first inductee today. So, Mr. Gary Justice. Well, first of all, congratulations, class of 2012, to the University of Pikeville Hall of Fame. Thanks for everybody coming out. This is a very special day. Uh, for these individuals, but it's also an honor for me, too, to be introducing Frank Conley to, to the Hall of Fame at the University of Pikeville. Frank uh, was a true definition of a student athlete. Uh, first of all, we'll talk about his athletic career. Individually, school record holder for 208 career RBIs. He had uh, second all-time as far as career home runs with 37. But his individual success led to team success also. 138 wins in four seasons. 40 wins in the year 2000, a school record as well. But his, his athletics led to success in the classroom as well. Got his baccalaureate degree, went on to get his master's degree from Marshall University. Uh, proud to announce also he's got baby Wyatt with him. He's out in the car. He was seven weeks premature. Got to come home on Wednesday, but he's a Conley, so he's going to be a fighter as well. So I'm proud to introduce Mr. Frank Conley. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, first, I'd like to congratulate all the uh, honorees and inductees. Uh, I hope it means as much to you guys as it does to me. Um, I really hope I don't jinx myself with this because we've got a few days left in January, but so far it's been the best month of my life. Um, the Hall of Fame itself gets me close to that. Um, earlier this month on the 8th, my little boy was born. Uh, his name's Wyatt. Uh, like Gary said, he showed up about seven weeks earlier than we wanted, but uh, he's here nonetheless. He's doing great. Uh, he spent about 16 days in the NICU there in Ashland. Uh, if you never, ever need your, you know, uh, ever need things put in perspective, you need to go sit in the NICU for a few hours. Uh, the first few days I was there, I was just worried to death about him. By the time I left, I was worried about every kid in there. Um, my wife has pictures, so, so <laughs> grab her later and check them out. <laughs> Everybody says he looks like me. He is handsome. <laughs> um, as far as the Hall of Fame is concerned, I couldn't be more proud to be here. I really thought about the Hall of Fame since, since I was playing here. Uh, my roommate was Alex Ward. He's a Hall of Famer. Uh, he's the only guy on earth who's hit more home runs than me, and he was my roommate. Think about that. Um, at Pikeville College. Um, only the best in our sport are recognized as Hall of Famers, so um, I'm really humble in being here. I loved every minute of my time at Pikeville College, every minute of it, and that's especially true for playing baseball. Um, a lot of people I played with, they, they would complain about practice, they'd complain about the travel, I loved all that stuff that went into it. When I look back on it, I miss practice and things like that more than anything. The camaraderie with the teammates, I miss that stuff. Um, we averaged over 34 wins per season during the four years I was here, so we were pretty successful. Um, even with all the wins and all the individual success I had, it was really hard for me to enjoy it because I always wanted more. I looked at the, uh, the, the write-up on the website. It said we won 40 games in 2000. The first thing I thought of was we lost to Berea, we lost to Asbury, two games we should have won. So we should have won 42 games that year at least. But I know if we'd have won those games, I'd have looked at two other games or three other games. It, it was just never enough for me. If I had three hits in a game, I wanted to get five hits in a game. If I hit a home run here, I, wanted, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't do it every time. So as much as I loved it, I didn't really sit back and enjoy it. I was never satisfied with it. And I think that kind of pushed me to be better. The failures are always what I dwelled on. 
And even to this day, some 12, 13, 14 years later, there's nights when I lay awake at night and I think, what if I'd have done something differently in this at bat? And I can't go to sleep. And my wife makes fun of me. I can't, most of the time I lose my wallet, my car keys, my wedding ring. I leave that stuff laying around and don't know what I did with it. But I can remember specific at bats from 14 years ago, just like they happened yesterday. <laughs> like I said, the failures, they always eat at me and they still eat at me. But today, at least a little bit, I feel some satisfaction because somebody else thought I was good enough to be here. So I appreciate that. As far as thanking people, I could stand up here for 45 minutes and thank people and talk about them and all the memories I had at Pikeville College and all the people that made an impact on me. But I'll try to give you the concise version because nobody wants me to be up here for 45 minutes, especially not me. Um, first off, I need to thank my mom and dad. Um, they're always my biggest fans. Uh, in the last few years, both of them have passed away. Uh, I know they'd be thrilled with this ceremony and thrilled with what happened. Uh, it's kind of bittersweet, though, them not being here because they were at all the games. They probably didn't miss 15 games in four years, traveling all through the states, everywhere. So it is a little bit bittersweet with all this happening and them not here to be here a part of it. But at the same time, it makes me appreciate it that much more. I also want to thank my um, brothers and sister for being here today. Uh, my sister Lisa was probably my third biggest fan, and she's always looked out for me my whole life, and she still does to this day. Uh, my brother Chuck, I grew up around uh, baseball fields, going to his practices and games, so that's where I f first got a taste of it. Uh, my younger brother Joey, uh, we probably played a thousand innings of uh, wiffle ball growing up. Uh, he actually played here one year at Pikeville College and hit, hit 400 exactly. So while I'm a Hall of Famer, when I go to family cookouts, statistically, I'm only the second best hitter there. Um, I'd like to thank Johnny LeMaster. Uh, he was a great coach for me, a great fit for me personally. Um, he always supported his players. He always had their back no matter what, uh, at least publicly. Now, privately, he might tear your butt, but out in front of everybody, he always supported you no matter what. He wasn't a real hands-on coach. He kind of let you do your own thing unless he saw something wrong, and then he'd fix it. Um, anybody who's played baseball knows that you can't be successful without teammates, and I had a lot of good ones. Uh, in the late 90s, up to 2000, um, Pikeville College was pretty much an offensive machine. We didn't have a lot of pitching, we didn't have a lot of defense. We played decent defense, but we could definitely hit. Um, guys like Alex Ward, who's a Hall of Famer himself, uh, Joe Pearson, who definitely should be in the Hall of Fame, uh, Jamie and Chris Owens, Kevin Varney, Jamie Hager, Jason Hunt, Chris Harris, Bud Sanson, Chris Pretty, and Gerald Giles. If you guys remember some of those guys or when you were here, with guys like that in the lineup around you, it made it easier to be a good hitter. Also guys like Justin Hall, Tommy Chamberlain, Adam Hall, Ricky Lopez, Donnie Cox, and Brody Napier. They were all great teammates, and I have to thank them for that. Uh, the last person I'd like to thank is kind of uh, an odd person to thank, I think. Um, I want to thank my wife, Andrea's high school boyfriend. Uh, she's, she's from Jenkins, which is about 30 miles down the road from here. Uh, and in high school, she planned to go to Moorhead State. But her high school boyfriend at the time worried that if uh, she went to Moorhead, some good-looking guy would come in and sweep her off her feet and steal her away from him. So uh, he helped talk her into coming here to Pipe College. <laughs> yeah. Thank Yeah. Uh, th things didn't work out the way he planned, uh, but I'm thankful every day that it didn't, and I'm thankful every day that he talked her into coming here. Um, I have a lot of great memories, a lot of great friends, a lot of great things because of Pikeville College, but she's by far and away the best. Uh, she's a perfect match for me. We go really good together, and as good a wife as she uh, has been to me, I know she's going to be an even better mother. Uh, as always, I'm proud to be a bear. Uh, I appreciate this honor, and I will forever. Thank you all.
I've been here 16 years. Frank Conley, that was the best speech I've ever heard. That was awesome. I've never in my life heard somebody thank their wife's ex-boyfriend. That is unbelievable. I'll remember that forever. Um, I have been blessed to see all these people perform, every one of them since I've been here. Uh, and I do consider it an honor to have seen them. In 2000, we started football. I'll never forget that press conference when we were announcing that we were starting women's bowling. I think it was women's golf and football. And you can imagine how much publicity the bowling and the golf team got. And this community had been wanting football for 50 years here at this school. We were blessed to get it started. We hired a, a coach who did, went out and beat the bushes and found about 75 or 80 phenomenal football players. And they showed up here on a Sunday afternoon. We had a meeting down in the park. And uh, they got to meet the community. And we had all kinds of people there to see that. And it just kind of went from there. This community fell in love with football at this school. But most of all, they fell in love with that first group. And as they went through, it kind of you know, they went from 75 to 50 and then down to 40. And then by the time these guys were seniors, there were nine of them. And we called them, they called themselves, we picked up on it, the Elite Nine. And in the entire time we've had football here, those nine guys and, and Leonard Moore, who was a senior with them, they are football at this school. Now, we've had a lot of success. We've been to playoff games. We've done a lot of good things, and we're doing a lot of good things right now. But it is all because of what these guys did. When Larry was here, he had eight interceptions in his career. He had five of them as a freshman. He had three as a sophomore. So you're saying, well, he would, didn't have an interception as a junior and senior. What's up with that? I'll tell you what was up with that. Every coach that we played looked for number 23 and threw it to the other side. They did not throw the football to his way. And that's how it went here as a, uh, when he was in school here. He was a phenomenal football player, and when he gets up here, you'll see he looks like he could still be a phenomenal football player. I guarantee you there's a lot of coaches who would love to have him playing on the football field in their secondary. He had two interceptions in a game at Concord that tied a school record. He recovered two fumbles against that school down in Scott County that we don't talk too much about in 2004, and that's a school record. He had 126 tackles, 92 of them were solos, and he had 37 passes broken up as a, as a player here, and to give you an idea as to how good that is, that's more than the entire team had in 2011, most years here at school. I am privileged to introduce to you one member of the Elite Nine going into Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Larry Forrester. I want to thank everyone. He, he gave me more credit than what's due. Uh, but I was pretty good, I guess. <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> when I got up here, Frank told me, he said if he had my speed, he would have probably been in the professional league right now. So, but Frank, you don't know how big and important you was to me when I played, because most folks don't know I actually played one year of baseball as well, my uh, freshman year. So I really appreciate what you've done, Frank. And, I just want to commend everybody else for this award as well. Uh, today, I won't keep you too long. I think uh, the opportunity that's been bestowed on me has become for one person, I definitely want to say is I want to thank God for allowing me to be here. Um, if it wasn't for him, I would not be in this situation right now. Uh, he gave me my parents, and my parents birthed me in 1982. They are not here to, uh, today, and I wish they would were here, but um, I definitely want to talk a little bit about my father and mother. Um, <laughs> you got to excuse me a little bit. I love them. Excuse me, guys. I've been through a lot, Rick. <laughs> I'm 
sorry. But I've been through a lot. Um, coming here was different. And my parents have been there for me through a lot. And I just say, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. My fiance, I love you. My future mother-in-law, you fed me a lot of meals. <laughs> but every Sunday, I used to go to her house, and she always fixed me. Actually, she fixed me what fixed me what I wanted. Uh, the one funny part, because I'm from South Carolina, I never heard of uh, fried potatoes. <laughs> I'm used to grits. So she fixed up some fried potatoes one day, and I said, hey, this is pretty good. <laughs> and I said, this, is, this is all right. So mommy, because you are my mother, and you will be my mother forever now, I love you, and I appreciate what you have done. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, there's a past president here and president's wife. Uh, they've been very influential with me as well. Uh, my coach, Zach Willis at the time, uh, Coach Riley, uh, he was my defensive back coach, and my elite nine brothers, uh, Antoine Brown, Justin Gordon, Quinn Collins, Jerry Anderson, Michael Shepard, Joe Spears, and Hank Mullins, and Derek Silas, which most folks know him as the Big Show. Uh, honestly, guys, I didn't play football until my last year of high school. So the opportunity that Pikeville gave me was the only four-year college that I had. So I took advantage of the opportunities that they gave me and became a bear. And now I am always will be a bear. I think uh, the education that I received here from the staff on down to the administration level was great for me. I really appreciate it, and I'll never forgive, forget um, who was very influential in getting me to where I am today. There's a lot of names that I can call. I don't want to leave anybody out, so if I do, I apologize. But I definitely want to give thanks to uh, Ms. Gilliam, Dr. Mitchell, Hyatt Roberts, Mr. Lovell, Lovell uh, my economics teacher. If everybody's been in his class, yeah, everybody knows Gene and that supply and demand curve and those widgets. <laughs> but it paid off. It did pay off. So, And also, I want to thank uh, ACE, which is Academic Cultural Enrichment. Um, I was a mentor there for the last two years, which gave me the opportunity of working with uh, freshmen and sophomores, too. So definitely want to give thanks to those guys and appreciate from what you've done for me. Um, it just been, it's been a good time for me. Uh, this year has been good, last year has been good, but I can tell you when I came into Pikeville, I didn't think I would stay. Uh, most of the guys didn't stay. Um, I had two we had four guys from my high school that came to Pikeville. And at the time, we didn't have an Applebee's or a Texas Roadhouse. Um, we didn't have anything. We had Circle K up on the, <laughs> up on the hill. Hey, if everybody knows what Circle K, you remember, it's torn down now. I think it's a Holiday Inn. Is it the Holiday Inn Express? Well, that's all we had. Um, first hillbilly days were kind of... <laughs> Uh, I'll just give you one story. I think I should tell you this. We had practice the first hillbilly day. Okay, we were all 18, 19. Uh, most of us from South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. I mean, most of us African American. Uh, we got down to the gym and we seen some signs that said Clan 1, Clan 2, Clan 3, <laughs> Clan 4. I said, well, I mean, I looked there, I mean, it was 2001. I said, well, I, I mean, hey, I know. We told Coach we wasn't getting off the bus. I said, Coach, and you can tell, like, Coach, we're not getting off the bus. You need to go check this out. I said, we're not. He said, well, it's okay, guys. It's, no. I mean, hey, I, I didn't think of it that way. Most folks don't. But when you see clan, you know, I'm, I'm a little darker complexion. I kind of get a little worried. <laughs> so coach went out there and checked it out. He said everything was good. Lo and behold, we didn't know that was a Shriners convention, which understandably, OK, that's fine. But again, at 18, I think it was more people praying that day 
Okay. <laughs> it could. So that was one of my always, I would say I remember that forever, about Hillbilly Days. Um, but it's a good event, didn't have any problems, nothing like that. But again, at that age, there were just some things I think they should have told us. <laughs> uh, but uh, I really do, and I want to give thanks to the president here uh, for what you've done so far to the school. Uh, it makes me proud to be in Kentucky and say I'm a graduate of the school. Uh, a lot of people didn't know about Pikeville when I got into Lexington. Um, but now you can see it. Everyone want to know, didn't you go to Pikeville College? Aren't you guys? You know, it's a lot of good, it's a good press, though. And I think what you've done is um, very commendable, and I appreciate it. And anything that I can do to assist with you, just let me know. Just want to let you know that. So, um, But again, I don't want to hold you too long. I just think that this is not really my day. There was a lot of people that was in, involved with me getting to this point. So I never take credit for things that I didn't do. I did work hard but I also knew there was people that paid the way for me. And I can tell all you young folks here, any advantage that you get, take it. If they're gonna pay you to go to college, graduate. Because it doesn't make sense not to. Uh, one thing my father always told me, if they're gonna use you to play sports, you use them to get your education. <laughs> so that's, I mean, but honestly, it's, that's what you should do. You should do that. and. Uh, you always remember Pikeville. It's always going to have an everlasting memory on you. Uh, but again, I, I thank everyone for your time, and uh, I appreciate the, the honor today. So thank you. This is a, uh, it's going to be tough to follow that one, Larry. It's going to be tough to follow that one. Uh, this is a uh, very special day for me uh, to uh, introduce this next young lady. Uh, eight years ago when, uh, when I was asked to uh, coach the softball team, uh, I knew uh, from watching and, and being around the game a while that, that uh, if you're going to have a, a successful program, it starts in a circle. And, uh, and the first person that I made contact with as a coach was uh, Kelly Nix. Uh, she was a pitcher at Hazard. Uh, she, uh, she also bowled over there. Uh, but, uh, but I knew that if, if we were going to be successful, that it had to start in a circle. And so, uh, uh, so I, I recruited her and, and uh, actually she was uh, the first person as a head coach that I, that I signed. And uh, I couldn't be more prouder. Uh, four years, uh, 36 wins, 335 strikeouts, uh, first team off conference three times. And uh, I couldn't ask for a better person off the field. Uh, she, she did everything you would ask, no complaints, went to class, graduated. She was also a member of our first national championship bowling team. Uh, but, uh, but it, it, it's my honor to introduce to you all Miss Kelly Neese. Welcome, family, friends, and you, Pike. What an honor it is to be standing on this stage once again this year. 
Last year, I had the honor of being inducted as a member of the 2004 National Champions. This year, I stand alone for my own accomplishments. Today, I'm somewhat speechless and overwhelmed with joy. When I came to Pikeville as an athlete, sitting in the same seat as you are today, I thought to myself, that's going to be me. With my determination and stubbornness, I set my goals. Beat Georgetown, make all-conference team, be the starting pitcher, pitcher of the week, all-conference, etc. Today, I can honestly say that my goals have been accomplished. When I think about my time at Pikeville College, I'm reminded of Bill Baird, Ron Dameron, Robert Staggs, and the dreaded 99. <laughs> Bill Baird. When I was in eighth grade pitching at the Hillbilly Classic, better known today as the Lindell Potter Memorial, I was introduced to Mr. Bill Baird. At this time, I didn't know that I'd be pitching against some of my future teammates. Bill Baird loves the game of softball, pitching, and most of all, the athletes. Bill Baird was always there with his support and trying to teach his stubborn pitchers some new pitches. Ron Dameron. I first met Ron when I was a young bowler looking for some more competition. After many tournaments and long discussions about Pikeville College, I can honestly say that Ron played a huge factor in my decision with Pikeville College. Every time I saw Ron, it was always a positive about my bowling game or softball and always seemed to know when I was having just one of those days. Robert Staggs. He already stole this line. He had the joy of signing me as his first signee for softball, but he just didn't realize how stubborn I could be. For example, one of those rainy days when we were in the gym practicing, I sprained my ankle. And of course, the famous quote, for the love of God, came out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but with my stubbornness and motivation to win, I was on the field that weekend. No feeling in my foot and pitching. Needless to say, we came away with the win. Lastly, but most importantly, I would like to thank my family for all their love and support. They are the ones that had to put up with me from day one. And listening to me complain about the game, I didn't complain to the coach, I complained to my parents. I would also like to give special thanks to my mother and father, the parents that were there 24 seven and were basically the team parents. I can honestly say that no matter the distance, time of day, weather, hot or cold, stop them from attending. I believe that my father could tell you the score and stats to every game that was ever played, and I believe my mother owned every set of gloves that was made. And I'm pretty sure there were times when my mother thought that my father was going to get kicked out of the game along with me. I'm not sure how she put up with me and my father. My parents and grandparents' support was the main factor in my success as an athlete and student. Always there with encouraging word. Excuse me. And reminding me that there's always next time if you don't succeed this time. Today I would like to close with a quote from my favorite pitcher, Lisa Fernandez. She's older, so many people probably don't still know anything about her. <laughs> it applies not only to softball, but to life. I make my weaknesses my strengths, and my strengths stronger. Thank you. I get another turn up here because Ron Dameron, who you've heard a lot about, is still coaching here and he's coaching today. They are um, in two bowling tournaments at two different places and he had no uh, recourse but to go there. But he wanted to be here because of these, the three that you've already heard and burning in this team and because of 
our next inductee. When we started men's bowling here, we weren't, didn't know really what we were getting, what we were doing, kind of flying by the seat of our pants, knew this thing was going pretty well on the women's side, and Ron went to Polk, Ohio, and found Cassidy. Cassidy was the person who we kind of built it around, and there were a lot of talented bowlers. We had a, he, he, he didn't carry this thing on his own. He had a lot of talented teammates, and a lot of them are here today. Uh, Ron, because he couldn't be here, he asked me to read this to you, so I'm going to, and I'm going to have to pick it up because I'm old and I can't see very well, so just bear with me. He said, I would like to congratulate Cassidy on his induction into the University of Pikeville Athletics Hall of Fame. Cassidy was and remains a great young man. Cass, along with his teammates, many of these guys are here, Kevin Kovash, Josh Harper, Craig Goldenshoe, Tony Preston, and Kevin Regal, were the foundation of the men's bowling program at UPike. Their actions, both on and off the lanes, made Pikeville one of the top men's bowling programs in the country, a tradition which they started that continues today. Cass has represented UPike well of being chosen as a member of the United States Pan American team and winning a gold medal in the Pan Am Games, as well as being the number one uh, UPike graduate, to, or the first UPike graduate to make the Pro Bowlers Tour. I would like to thank Cass and his teammates for making that all elusive first national tournament and starting the ball rolling for the men's program at UPike today. Cass, thanks for being so special. I think those are some pretty good words right there. Cassidy did a great job of representing us. Think about this. We, they rank bowlers in two different categories. The most important, obviously, is your total pinfall. Of all the bowlers who have bowled a season here, all the seasons of bowling that you could add up, think about this. Today, Cassidy has three of the top 11 single seasons in school history. That's pretty stout. But he didn't just represent us and, and help us get to the first national tournament. Cassie also represented his country. He won 10 medals as a member of Team USA. Six of them were gold medals. He has worn not only the orange and black well, but the red, white, and blue as well. And in the year he spent on the PBA Tour, he broke the 16-game scoring record for the entire tour, the entire history of the tour. Cassidy holds the 16-game scoring record, breaking that an event in Wichita, Kansas. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Cassidy Schaub. Pikeville was a great stepping stone in my life and my bowling career. Uh, it exposed me to the passion of bowling in a way that uh, only college bowling could. I've made lifelong friends through Pikeville, as Rick mentioned, basically the five guys. We called ourselves the Pentagon, Josh, Craig, Kevin, and Tony, who are all sitting down front. It's crazy to think that at the age of six, my two-handed bowling career began in a small town of Ashland, Ohio. I recall many hours spent at Luray Lanes, a small 24-lane center that is now the only center in town. Uh, I have to give thanks to Rick Cook, who was basically my first coach. He would tell you he didn't make me into a two-handed bowler. He just got tired of chasing me around the bowling alley every time I threw it with two hands. So instead of wasting his breath, he just found ways to make me better. The sport of bowling has given me so many opportunities which I feel truly blessed. I was on Team USA for three years, earned 10 medals, six gold, three silver, one bronze. <coughs> Wearing the USA across your back and bowling for more than yourself is something I can't put into words. Every time I hear the Star Spangled Banner, I recall standing on the podium in Brazil, receiving my first gold medal at the Pan American Games with Rhino Page sharing that memory with not only him, but with my family also who was there. Bowling on Team USA and being a PBA member for a year has allowed me to bowl with and against the greatest bowlers in the world. 
I've learned from some of the greatest coaches and players, such as Tommy Jones, Chris Barnes, Dino Castillo, Patrick Allen, and Shannon O'Keefe. Most that I still have great friendships with today, but my greatest conversation with these pers professionals haven't been about bowling. Instead, the conversations dealing with failure, learning there are more important things than bowling, and family were hot topics when talking rather than lane conditions and new equipment. I learned that after I left the tour that those conversations are the ones I remember the most, and bowling without fun becomes a job. A perfect example would be this New Year's when a family friend put me and my family into a nine pin tournament. For those who don't know, that's knock down nine pins, you get a strike. New Year's Eve, we all had a blast. I made cut and I finished sixth. I then was informed by my wife and sister-in-law that we were gonna bowl again the next day in another nine pin tournament. As I have to admit, I really was not, not that excited because I knew football would be on all day. I went along with it because I could tell that they were really excited and wanted to go. At that turn, tournament, I ended up bowling 1,200, a perfect score. Once again, let me remind you, it's only nine pins to knock down. But it really seemed effortless to throw all 48 strikes, only because I wasn't focused on what I needed to do, but on my family. The excitement was from seeing my wife and my sister-in-law yelling after every shot and cheering everyone on on our pair. At that moment, I flashed back to Pikeville and recalled my teammates, the Pentagon, and my parents doing the same thing back in the day. Bowling has taken me from Brazil, Turkey, Istanbul, Puerto Rico, and small centers found almost in every state. I found out what it means to bowl for a paycheck, and I've also found out what it means to win 15,000 in one tournament. I've broken many three ball bag rollers and I've even shattered a few bowling balls out of frustration and anger. My greatest mentors have taught me how it's just a game and my, right, my wife reminds me of an important tip she learned from Jason Belmonte. That is, I get 15 minutes after my last ball is thrown at any tournament and by the end of that 15 minutes, I have to let it all go. My life still includes dreams of a tour title down the road, but for now my focus and passion lies on my wife and her delivering our first child in July. And you better believe that he or she, which we find out Tuesday, whether it'll be he or she, will be a two-hander from Ashland, Ohio. But as Josh and Tony and myself can understand, a righty of course, because the left never gets anything. So that's my story, and I'm grateful that it includes a stop in Pikeville, Kentucky. Thank you to the Pentagon for making this great trip, and my amazing family that have came back to Pikeville with me. And thank you to the University of Pikeville for this induction. Okay, the next honoree, and I, I'll never do it justice because I'm, I'm very quick when I get up here and, and, and talk, so, uh, but I can say, I can say a couple of things. Uh, uh, I've been here six months. I've been here six months, and of course I'm at all the football games and basketball games and as many athletic contests as, as Robert and I can, can possibly go to. And uh, a quick story, an uh, inside story, is for six months, no, for, and Kelly Wells, you can attest to this, for five months, I would say, well, you know, is Vernon going to be there? Is Vernon, and, and Kelly looked at me, and, you know, he said, yeah, yeah, Vernon, and I think he went along with it. Well, 
I would talk to Vernon and he wouldn't acknowledge me. And I thought, well, Kelly, this guy, he just, you know, he won't acknowledge me when I, when I call his name. He was like, well, there's a reason. It's a reason for that. His name's Vernon, not <laughs> Vernon. So, you know, I apologize. And, and if I still call you Vernon, you know, that you still answer. But, but he's been very, he, you've, been a, you've been very good to us. And, and if you go to the football games or, or to the Expo uh, Center, he's the, he's the voice there, you know, announcing the games. And uh, you've been very good also leading us in prayer. You're a very inspirational young man to us. And, and I, you know, again, the, the bad thing about this is I don't talk very long, but uh, words can't describe what you've meant to the university because you're so good. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. What a wonderful thing to give a preacher a microphone. I was born by the river in a little old tin. I usually like to sing before I testify. If you go to Applebee's, when you walk in the door to the extreme right, there's a mural painting, I guess, for you, Pike. On that mural, there's a young man holding a megaphone that looks like from the prehistoric ages. That's my son. If you go to Dr. Thad Manning's office up at Marbone and you walk down the corridor of his office or hallway, there's a huge painting on the wall. A woman standing there with one of those lays, you know, around her neck with Dr. Manning in his Elvis impersonation costume. That's my wife. <laughs> To my family, I'd like to say, being inducted into the University of Pikeville Hall of Fame, I think this raises the bar just a little. <laughs> Greatest day of my life, January the 4th, 1987, I was baptized into Christ. November the 15th, 1975, my wife, after months of begging, finally convinced me to marry her. <laughs> She's been so blessed ever since. <laughs> May the 14th, 1989, on Mother's Day, my son was born. He's been a source of pride and joy and irritation. <laughs> and he's been a blessing for about two or three years here. He was, a, I think, for at least almost three years, he was a uh, sophomore here at Pop College. <laughs> He was a poster child until he was replaced by sizzling Seti sitting up there. <laughs> Praise God. I've always felt this, that any good PA announcer does not try to draw attention to himself, that he puts the attention where it should be. And that's on the athletes that are performing and on the coaches. And uh, I am immensely humble and honored to be a member, an honorary member, whatever I'm in there. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, University of Pikeville. I know the feeling. Uh, for years, Nan tried to talk me into marrying her, so I, I know how it goes. I, I thought for a second I was going to have to start singing you down. But <laughs> this next group of young ladies is a is a very special bunch. Uh, the the uh, first Lady Bear team to ever play in, in a national tournament. Uh, I had to fortune of, of being an assistant coach on, on Billy's staff, and, or the only assistant coach on Billy's staff, so, uh, but this, this, uh, this group of young ladies is, is a, a very, very special bunch. Uh, I can stand up here and tell some stories, but, uh, but I'm not. 
for fear of reprisal. Uh, but one I am going to tell is, is when, when we finally made it to Jackson, Tennessee, we were uh, first round playing, uh, I believe it was the Masters. Who? Huh? Who? Oh, Union. I'm sorry, Union, Tennessee. Masters was second. <laughs> Union. So I'm sitting there on the bench, and about halfway through the second half, I hear this click, 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 click. I'm thinking, what in the world is going on here, people? So I looked around, and right beside me is, she's not here so I can tell this, is, is was Brandy Kazee. She's Brandy Clark now, but has a camera out, <laughs> taking pictures from the bench. I said, <laughs> Brandy, <laughs> what are you doing? She said, well, I'm not going to play. I'm going to take pictures. <laughs> So, uh, so I'd like to introduce uh, Coach uh, Coach Bill Watson. Oh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say congratulations to the inductees up here, especially Larry for bringing up the year 1982, which is the year I graduated from high school. So <laughs> that makes me feel real old. I, mean, I appreciate that very much. So. Um, Basically, what I want to do is just give you a, a very quick synopsis of, of the year. Um, I, I was hired in, in the summer of 97 uh, to, to be the women's coach from the men's side. Um, our athletic director at the time, Ron Dameron, uh, our president at the time, Bill Owens, um, asked me if I would accept the position. And I went home, talked to my wife, uh, uh, Betty, and then we decided to, to take the position. Uh, the next time, the thing I had to do was hire an assistant, and, and, and I got stuck with Rob. I mean, I hired, I hired Rob uh, to be my assistant. That's the best hire I've ever made. Uh, Taryn, sorry, but best hire I've ever made. We've become the best of friends, and uh, we've shared a lot through the years that, that we've been together. Um, we started off, uh, our, our first two games were in Nashville, Tennessee, um, and, and uh, we, we played Trevecca Nazarene our first game, got beat by, ended up being 10 or 12, but uh, we're, we're three or five, three to five point game most of the time. Well, the next night we go to David Lipscomb University, also in Nashville, and uh, uh, let's say they're number five, number three or four team in the country, and uh, let's say it just wasn't a three to five point game most of the time. But, and you know, me, I, coming from the men's side, I'm still pretty competitive, and in, in, uh, as I am now, but um, I was going to go discuss loudly uh, about the need to compete uh, all the time. And, uh, Rob and I are walking down the hallway uh, at, uh, at Lipscomb and, and we hear something, somebody hollering. Um, we get to the locker room door and Misty Haynes <laughs> has already taken care of that for me. <laughs> so we, Rob and I walk in after she gets done, which is, it, it, was, it was a while before she got done. We, uh, we walk in and uh, I think right then they realized that, that we were going to be a successful basketball team. Um, uh, we come back, we, we get on a roll, we win a few games, and uh, we leave for Christmas and uh, go to Florida and play. And that's really, I think, where we, we, we really started to bond uh, from a coaching staff with, with players. Uh, because with the exception of, uh, of Jamie Steele uh, uh, and Jamie Heflin, uh, all of them were, were here the, the previous uh, year or two years. So they re we started, really started to grow together that, 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 uh, that time in Florida. We come back and um, we, my wife and I are expecting a second, uh, a second child on January 6th. Well, the, the first child, Casey, was born for C with a C-section. So my second child is a scheduled C-section on January 6th. And we played the University of Cumberland, at the time, Cumberland College on January 6th. Naturally, we have a conflict. So it was obviously easier to move the C-section to January 5th as opposed to the game. So if for those of you that know Blair, Every January 5th, she feels the need to remind me that the game was more important than she was. So, but, uh, uh, but we did come back the next day and, and, and defeat Cumberlands. So it, it, was, a, it was a good weekend. Um, we, we continue on. We, we, we get some wins. And we finish the regular season uh, uh, with 19 wins. Uh, not only is this the first women's basketball team to represent Pikeville in the, in the national tournament, uh, we had an opportunity to, to be the first Pikeville College women's team to win 20 basketball games. And, and any sport you play, 20 uh, is, is a magic number. And 
Uh, you know, we, we're, I'm having people come up and congratulate me on a great season with 19 wins, and we're, we, we haven't played a pro season yet. So we go to Lindsey Wilson. Um, they, had, they had defeated us twice during the year. Ironically, that's who we play this afternoon when, this, when the, we're inducting this team. But we, um, we go to Lindsey Wilson. We get off uh, a little bit to a late start. Uh, we always stop and have a, a good pregame meal. And um, either, either Rob or myself, we were late getting out of the restaurant. I don't know which one that was. But uh, we got to, to, to Lindsey a little bit late, about 6.30 for a 7 o'clock tip. And they, we walk in the gym about 6.40. And uh, Coach Wellington and, and the administration, Lindsey, says, we'll put up some more time for you. No problem. Don't worry about it. So we talked to a couple of our kids, uh, our captains, Rose and, and Misty. And, they said, Coach, we're good to go. So we start on time. Well, again, we get there at 6.30, and we tip off at 7. We controlled the entire game. We won, we won, became the first team to win 20 basketball games, and they're excited uh, for, that, for that achievement. But then we got to we uh, get them back focused to, to play Brescia with an opportunity to do something even bigger, even better than, than, than what we could envision. So we go to Brescia, and it's, it's, it's a close game. Both of us have uh, three, four-point leads most of the, uh, most of the afternoon. Uh, and we, uh, we finally get, a, get on a roll, get some defensive stops, stretch the lead out a little bit. And I don't feel any of our teams that I've had here at Pikeville have been selfish basketball teams. All right? This team epitomizes that. In the semifinal win against Lindsey Wilson, I think Misty May had 24 and Rose had 18. So 42 of our points came from those two kids. Well, Brescia took them out of the game a little bit. I think Misty ended up with four, but she ended up with nine or 10 assists. Kelly Blackburn had a bunch of assists. We had a young lady hit seven threes and ended up with 27 points in the championship game at Brescia. So obviously we're celebrating. We're going to we're going to Jackson, Tennessee. All right, first time ever. Campus got behind us, had us a big party, big going away, uh, shindig, and um, we realize once we get there, or we, two days before the draw comes out that we're playing Union University, who happens to be the number one team in the country, in their hometown in front of their home fans, in their home arena. Outstanding. But we're there. We're there. We go, and with, uh, with about 16, 17 minutes to go in the game, we're actually up by five. We have an opportunity to go up seven. Um, uh, we we throw, throw the basketball away. And then Union ultimately, because of uh, uh, the debt that they had, ended up winning the basketball game. But it was an experience that, that, that I'll never forget, uh, an experience I don't think these young women will, will ever forget. Um, and, and for that, I, I'm deeply grateful. Uh, what I would like to do uh, before, uh, before I close is, is introduce the young ladies individually. Uh, if you would stand up, please. Misty Haynes, stand up. Stand up. Well, Claudette Gillespie. Robin Music. Heather Schnell. Now, I apologize to the husbands out there because I'm introducing them to how I remember them from that year. <laughs> Jamie Steele. <laughs> Kelly Blackburn. <laughs> Rosemary Gillum. And Jamie Heffer. Congratulations. Thank you. In closing, I, I would like to tell them one thing. Um, I had never coached women's, women at all. I'd always been a boys high school coach, a, a men's assistant coach, like I said. That one year, they taught me more about coaching basketball than I taught them. First of all, I just want to say Misty Haynes was the senior captain back then, and I was a junior. So I walk in today, and she said, hey, underclassmen, you're doing a speech. So, <laughs> so I'm a little unprepared, so uh, bear with me. Um, first of all, I just kind of want to say, uh, on a show of hands, how many people caught a pass for Misty with your face a few times? Yeah. I, think, I think my right eye still twitches a little bit from one of them. So, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and Larry on the whole Circle K thing. I think when we were here, we had Jerry's, and there's so many choices now, I can't handle them. I might still go there today. <laughs> uh, really, it's just great being back here. I want to say uh, congratulations to all the inductees today. And, uh, and you guys, I'm glad everybody made it back. There's a, there's a few people that couldn't be here today, um, Brandy and uh, Jamie Runyon and Michael. Um, we, we, we wish they could be here, but we under, understand why they couldn't. But it's, uh, it's great to see everybody again. And. Uh, I just want to start off by saying, you know, I, th I thank God for the ability he gave me to play basketball. 
and I'm so glad he let all of us pick up a basketball at some point. And I'm really grateful that he led us here to Pikeville College, University of Pikeville. I think I owe you about five dollars now. <laughs> um, but it was a, just an amazing, amazing opportunity to come here and play basketball with these individuals and be coached by this coaching staff and to be around pay, great people like you know, Rick Bentley and President Smith and his wife at that time and the administrative staff that we had. As far as the basketball team went, um, it was my junior year and the first two years I was here we had a different coach and we had some great assets but we just, we just could not come together and play like we needed to play. So we got Coach Watson, a uh, new coach, a um, couple new players, but a lot of us were back for our second, third year. And things just started clicking, like Coach said. We, we just started playing really well together. And him, poor guy, coming from the, the men's team, um, it was tough coaching the women. <laughs> I think there was one day we even maybe had a few tears coming out of his eyes. It was so bad. But, but, but he did great with us, and, and we all clicked, and, and magical things happened that year. And we had the, the best winning record for a women's team at that time. And we made it to the national tournament, but you know, and that was those were all great achievements. But bigger than that, you know, I feel like I have a whole row of sisters back here, and a few guys that I know I could call if I need anything and, and totally depend on them. And not just that, but in the stands we had not just our parents, but a lot of parents. And you know, we'd go and eat at a different parents' house every week, or we. I mean, I got snowed in at Misty's mom's house one night and ended up staying there for like three days. But it was just. Not only did you have your family and your immediate teammates, but you had so many other family members that you, you grow to, to know and love. And even here today, I feel like it's a, a big family reunion, so it's really great to see all the, the wonderful faces back again. And so it was just, it was an amazing team, an amazing year. But not only that, it was just an amazing place to be to come to school. I'm not exactly sure why I chose Pikeville. I came over here and took a look at the campus, you know, met my coach at the time, and it, it seemed like a a good enough place but looking back now it was one of the best decisions I ever made through one of through one of my teammates that I play basketball with I met my husband Tim who's here with me today and thank you for being here with me today but it's amazing how making the decision to come here to Pikeville completely molded my life and it really was one of the best decisions I've ever made and I found out that another young kid from where I live now is coming over here to play golf and I think to myself she probably doesn't realize it but that's one of the smartest decisions she's made to come over here to Pikeville so in closing, I just wanted to, to say a thank yous on behalf of all of us. First of all, again, just wanted to thank God for giving us all the ability to, to play basketball and letting us all meet up on the basketball court. And I want to thank my teammates. Everything we did that year, we couldn't have done without each other. You know, we, 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 did, we were really selfless team, and it was just a great opportunity to play with you guys. And if you guys ever need anything from me, don't, you know, feel free to reach out, and I know I can do the same for you guys. I love you all. I want to thank the coaches. Bags, Coach Watson. <laughs> it was great being with these guys. They put up with a lot of uh, a lot of just different stuff from us every day, and so uh, I'm surprised uh, I'm surprised they're still putting up with the women. But I'm proud of them for doing it. <laughs> and I also just want to thank the staff and the teachers when we were here. I know I saw Mr. Lovell here in the crowd, and uh, Miss Kay, Miss Grizzard. They're big supporters of the games. And uh, thank you to Ron Dameron. Um, President Smith and his wife at the time. They were just a great support team for us. No matter what we needed, they would always help us out. Again, I wanted to thank all of our, our parents and our siblings that would come to the games and cheer us on. Mom and Dad, I love you guys. And Dad, thanks for being six foot eight because it really helped me out. <laughs> uh, helped, helped out Coach Watson with the rebounds too, so he thanks you too. <laughs> and, uh, and thank you for all the new family members that we've uh, picked up along the way, the, the kids and our spouses. Thank you guys for all being here with us too. And thank you to the fans. You know, it was great. The, day, the days when we were at home, we had some really great crowds that, that uh, cheered us on. You know, we even have some people that came back today, April, Deanna. Thank you. You guys didn't have to come, but thanks for coming back to, to be here with us today. But, uh, but it was just great for, for all the fans that followed us around, whether it was a home game or a away game. We love you guys, too. And uh, we just uh, we thank you guys for, for honoring us here today. It's, it's great to be back, and um, God bless you all.
Vice President James Hurley was supposed to close us out today, but he's on university business today. And first of all, he wants to send his congratulations to everybody. And he'll be personally congratulating everybody today at the ball game. So he should be back this afternoon. Um, as far as a special day as a Hall of Fame member, I know it's a special day for me seeing a new class coming in, but it's also a very special day for you guys. I'm very proud to see our student athletes out today. This is something you guys should strive for as well. Not Hall of Fame uh, induction, but also everybody up here has graduated, got their degrees. That's the thing you guys should be focused on. Uh, Chad Gaspin, our baseball coach, always says academics influences athletics. If you're strong in the classroom, you'll be strong on the athletic field too. He tells me a statistic, and he keeps up with it. 39 all-conference or all-American players he has coached in the past. 38 have been very strong academically. The one person who's not had a learning disability, Coach Gassman said he worked harder than he had any, everybody at, academically. 39, 39 people worked hard in classrooms, so we'll get those degrees. Um, Rick Bentley tell me we'll have a reception out here. Please stick around with us. Our men's and women's teams tip today at the Expo Center. Women's tips at 2. The men's game is at 4. Please come out and support both the teams. Key conference games for us. Um, as Governor Patton says, it's never a better time to be a bear. And thanks, everybody, coming out. Thank you very much.